Hey guys, welcome to the Girl Techno Podcast. I am your host, Shawnee Sanders, and we have a really good show for you today. Today's show is all about communication. It's all about how you communicate with others, how you speak publicly. And if you're an entrepreneur, this is definitely the show for you. So today's guest is Brendan, of CEO of Master Talk. And I want to get this right. He has a successful YouTube channel and a coaching business where he started to help people master the world of public speaking and effective communication. Brendan, welcome to the show. Donnie, the pleasure is absolutely mine. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. So I'm excited about this show because I struggle with public speaking. And I think people with podcasting is like, it's easy to me to do podcasting because, you know, before video podcasting was all about just audio. So nobody was actually looking at you. You know what I mean? So it's more so about just the voice behind the microphone and it's easy. But now when it comes to being seen on camera and speaking publicly, I myself tend to kind of tense up and get nervous. So I'm really excited about this conversation. But before we jump into any of that, I really like to get the story behind the brand is how I start off my show. So tell me the story behind Master Talk. Yeah, for sure, Shawnee. So the story was in college. I studied accounting, funny enough, which is really the (laughs) opposite of what I do today. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to be a numbers guy in corporate. But while I was studying in business school, I started doing these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, Shawnee, but for nerds. So while other guys my age were like playing rugby or basketball or football, sports you wouldn't see me playing, I did presentations competitively, and that's how I learned how to speak. Yeah, And then as I got older, I started coaching other students on how to communicate ideas, mostly for free back then because I just liked it, and I accidentally got really good at communication coaching. And that's what led to the YouTube channel Master Talk because I felt that, wait a second, no one's sharing this stuff for free. So I just started making videos and it turned to something I never could have imagined. Oh my goodness. Let me ask you this. Did you think that, did you always knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Was entrepreneurship a goal of yours? Maybe not community in this effective communication space, but just being an entrepreneur, was that a goal of yours? That's a great question, Shawnee. I'm, a, I'm the probably one of the best examples you'll have on a podcast of the made entrepreneur, not the born entrepreneur. I had zero interest in being a business owner. I thought entrepreneurship was for people who couldn't get really successful corporate jobs. So the, <laughs> literally, so the re, the reason I, I even, even when I went into business, I was super risk averse and I'll, I'll tell you why. Why did I do those case competitions? Not because I had a passion for speaking. I developed one later in life. I obviously have one today, but. At the time, it was literally, I was a 19-year-old kid. I had a prom suit on because I couldn't afford anything better when I was going out to business school networking with people Uh because my parents were factory workers. And somebody told me to do case competitions so I get a job at the big four accounting firms. So I was like, oh, like, yeah, I got to do these competitions. And then I accidentally got good at this, and it turns out I could charge people for it. (laughs) That's so cool that you accidentally got good at it. You know what I mean? So that is, that's a good story. I really do like that. So effective communication, why do you think, and and when I thought about um, this show and getting ready to talk to you, it just made me think about communication overall, not just in business, not just an entrepreneur, but just in relationships, in marriages, in friendships, just overall being able to communicate better and effectively relay your messages better to whomever you're speaking to is so important. But one of the questions I want to ask you, Why do you think people have such a fear of communication? Like a lot of people struggle with just communicating the simplest things. Why do you think that is? Absolutely, Sean. And you know, if you had asked me this question a few years ago, like somebody did, he's like, hey, Brandon, where does the fear of communication come from? I would have looked at that person and said, I don't know, London, New York. (laughs) Whereas today I have a better answer to give you, which is Mm -hmm. the education system, Sean. So a lot of us, whether we live in the States, in a, in the in Canada, in India, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. We all go through a similar education system. And all of those middle school days, those high school days, those elementary school days, that's where we learn how to present formally. But all of those presentations, Shawnee, have three fundamental problems. Number one, they're all mandatory. You don't wake up in the morning mm-hmm. and say, hey, Sean, you want to get breakfast and present all day? Nobody says <laughs> that. No, no. Right, so that's number one. Number two is all of those presentations, Shawnee, are never tied to a passion or something you remotely care about. So it's never, oh, hey, Shawnee, what are you passionate about? Do you like radio? Do you like fashion? Do you like decor? You know, based on your cool decor in the back, yeah. right? So why don't you give a presentation on that? We'll clap for you. Like, the no, you got to talk about Shakespeare and poetry, and mm-hmm. you got to get over it. So that's number two. 
<laughs> and number three, Shawnee, which is the worst, every presentation, for some reason, is tied to a bloody punishment. <sighs> so if you don't do a great job, you lose great. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is we grow up believing that communication is a chore and nobody wants to get better at doing the dishes. Mm, that's so funny how you attach it to like beliefs. You know what I mean? Because that is true. It was a struggle. It was a fear to stand up in front of your class and present something. And you did look at it as a punishment, like a thing that you really dreaded doing as a kid. And now you bring that over into your adulthood and into your corporate jobs. I remember when I first had to present in a meeting in um, my corporate job and I can tell you that for me personally, this is full transparency. I tend to start sweating and then I tend to talk really fast. And I think because I talk really fast, it's something I inherited from my mother because my mom talks really fast. And so I was just like, I mean, I could tell you, Brent, I was so embarrassed because here I am standing and I'm drenched. You know what I mean? Armpits and everything. And you're just like trying to present. And it was the most nerve wracking experience I have ever had. Now, since then, I've gotten better, but I can always do better at it. So how do you tell someone, how do you get someone or what steps can a person take to calm those type of nerves when it comes to speaking publicly? Right, Shani. So, so the way that I think about it is it always goes back to common sense, right? There's so many things in our life that we've been scared of that we did anyways. Yeah. Getting married, having children, asking somebody out on a date, uh, going mm -hmm. to that restaurant, traveling to that new country, going, applying for college. We've all done hard things in our life, despite the fear that it was attached to. Yeah. We jumped in anyways to that job interview because we needed that job as an example. How do you bring that same common sense approach to communication? So it's not about trying to remove the fear. It's about treating it like any every any other thing that we've done in our life, which mm -hmm. is how do we motivate ourselves more than what the fear is attached to so we actually do it, which brings me to my, to my million dollar question, so to speak, that I'd encourage everyone to think about, mm -hmm. which is how would your life change if you were an exceptional communicator? If you actually mm -hmm. put in the time to do this, how would your life change? And of course, I've got a lot of tangible strategies on how to do that, but it yeah. starts with that mindset, which is, okay, and, it, and to your point, which I 100% agree with, Shani, is it's not about being a TED speaker. It's not about being Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. It's about showing up better for our families, raising our children, mm -hmm. raising a family, uh, increasing the quality of our life. That's mm -hmm. what motivates us to become better at speaking. Oh my goodness, that that, that is true. So. How important, especially as entrepreneurs, I think about when you're an entrepreneur, you're pitching consistently, you're giving presentations. How important is that effective communication for entrepreneurs? Absolutely, Shauna. So here's my lining threads for, for business owners specifically, which is another question, which is simply this. As your business scales, are your communication skills scaling with the business? Mm -hmm. Meaning that as an entrepreneur, if you're making 100 to 200 grand a year, let's say, top line revenue, you're usually doing every part of the value chain, sales, marketing, delivery, ascension. Yeah. But then as the business scales, you start to hire people and delegate what you used to do to other people. But if your communication skills are not sharp at the 500K mark, the $2.6 million mark, the 700K mark, you create a lot of inefficiencies in the business when you create SOPs or standard operating procedures. Example, you got an employee, you go up to them, and you just say, hey, uh, didn't I tell you to do this last week? And they go, I don't really understand what you told me to do. Like, what do you mean? So you have to find you, you find yourself as an entrepreneur repeating yourself 10, 15 times mm -hmm. until they get the point. So yeah, you got to sharpen up your skills to keep scaling. So let me ask you this. How important, if you are a leader in an organization, even entrepreneurship, how important is communication when it comes to motivating your employees? Because morale can be down and sometimes it can be based off everything a person says. Not how they say it, but what they say, right? Not what they say, but how they say it. So how do you, how do you tell someone, a leader or an entrepreneur to get, how do you get them, how do you get them to get their employees motivated through effective communication? How does that happen? Yeah, for sure, Shawnee. So there's, there's two ways of approaching this. The first way is to go back to the vision of the business. And mm -hmm. the best way to do that is to explain what exists today, why what today is bad and how we as the future and the company that we're building is going to change that. So let's say you're Elon Musk, you're presenting Tesla to your employees and it was grueling hours. Like nobody knew if they could even get the tech to work. <laughs> SpaceX too. But he would always go, hey, look guys and gals, this is what exists today. 
do we want that for our children? Do we want that for the next generation where every single human being is driving a gasoline fueled car? No, we don't want that future, right? This is the future mm-hmm. we're driving towards. And in SpaceX is we got to get to Mars. That's mm-hmm. the big thing because mm-hmm. we need to be a multi-planetary species. So what the visionary is doing is they're constantly repeating the same message over and over and over again until it's perfectly tweaked so that it always brings back morale. And then the other piece to communication, which isn't a direct presentation, but it's more about having those intimate conversations with the best performing people in our company that move the needle and figuring out what's important to them. What are their top three goals for the year? Why are those goals important to them? And adjusting what we want for them to do in the business versus what they want to achieve for their personal lives. Mm, that, I mean, that's that's really good to know, because I think that's important, especially in a work environment when it comes to how leaders communicate, um, even just strategies, overall visions and goals to their employees to motivate them, because I know motivation is such a huge part of the of the workforce. Um, let me ask you this question, too. Is there different communication? Is there from your opinion, your expertise? Would you say there's different communication styles for a leader in an organization versus an entrepreneur? Do they communicate differently or do the styles are the same or interchange? Yeah, Shani, great question. So the big, it's very similar, probably 70, 80%, mm-hmm. but the other 20, this is where the difference lies. Because if you're an early stage entrepreneur, you're going to be spending a lot of your time selling, right? Closing deals. Even me at my stage of business, I'm spending most of my time closing deals, right? That's mm-hmm. what I have to do because because every business is downstream from lead generation. If you can't get leads in the business, that nothing else happens. Yeah. So... Because of that, an entrepreneur relative to somebody in a stable corporate job has to spend a lot more time communicating their offer, doing a lot more one-on-one strategy sales calls, a lot more webinars, a lot more going out to networking cocktails and knowing how to build relationships. That's also true with the corporate leader, Shani, but the Mm -hmm. difference is they they don't have as much risk as the entrepreneur does. So for them, yeah. it's more about playing politics a little bit better, knowing how to manage the teams they already have, they already have a preconceived budget, and now it's just about communicating the goals to the team so they can keep moving up within the company and get their next promotion. So it's just a different incentive system, which mm-hmm. changes what they practice within the realm of communication. That's really good there. Um, when it comes to your Master Talk program, is there is there multiple... Um, like courses in it like how do you describe that to someone when you're pitching to someone that you feel needs to take your program yeah for sure shawnee so so for us think of me like a personal trainer so what's the Mm -hmm. difference between going to a gym versus going to a personal trainer so going to the gym is great you know some people can can do that on their own and they they find a lot of success Mm -hmm. and then there's other people that say no no no, i need that human accountability Mm -hmm. and i'll pay a lot more money but that will guarantee the result because now i don't have a choice anymore because now the person is (laughs) calling me every day so for me the philosophy is saying like i'm going to share all my tips for free because not everyone can afford me that's my mission right how do i help Mm -hmm. every human being on earth become a great speaker i obviously can't coach every (laughs) human being so I'll share everything for free. And we'll talk about those easy threes that people can do every day to work on yes. their speaking. But the other piece is going like my CEO clients, my high level executives where their companies are paying for them to work with me. Or if they're a coach that's already doing like a hundred grand and above for them, they, they want to pay for speed. Like they're not, they don't want to mm-hmm. watch 15 episodes of me on a podcast. They don't want to watch 20 videos of me on my YouTube channel. They go like, I don't have the time to do this. I'm just going to watch two videos to know that you're smart. And then after that, I'm just going to work with you so you could privately yell at me to make sure I get the result. So that's the difference. (laughs) That is too funny. (laughs) Let me ask you, do you think some of your methods can translate to like relationships when it comes to, I know this is not part of your industry, but like parenting, communicating to your kids, communicating to your teenagers, you know, because that's when communication really hits ahead. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so it's like, do the steps or do the program that you offer in the videos that we can watch will help when it comes to that type of communication as well? Absolutely, Shawnee. Obviously, it's not my full specialization, yeah. but I can give you some thoughts on that that will help mm-hmm. for sure. So let me give a simple one that I always teach on relationships, which is how to communicate boundaries effectively. Mm. So the, the challenge that I see with a lot of people, whether it's in romantic relationships, platonic ones, friendships, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. We always say this sentence, but the sentence makes absolutely no sense. And it's this, I need more alone time. 
What does that mean, Sean? Does that mean I want two weeks in a cave, don't text me? Does it mean I actually just need 50 minutes in the morning to read a book? Does it mean I want to walk the dog <laughs> in the evening to, to clear my thoughts? Because if we don't clarify what that means, it could also get interpreted just as equally to this person doesn't love me. Yes. This person doesn't like spending time with me. This person doesn't care about me. So what 100%. does that mean? Boundaries means communicating. Instead of saying, I need more alone time, we go to, hey, babe, I would love 15 minutes in the morning to read a book because it helps me clear my mind and show up better for my for our family. Is that okay with you? So notice mm -hmm. how that same shift is not about becoming a TED speaker. Mm -hmm. It's about saying, wait a second, Brendan is not just speaking well. He also lives with his mother and his sister, which is true. And he mm -hmm. hasn't had an argument with them in over a decade. And that's not an accident. Trust me. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh my God. So how do you, if someone comes to you and they say, Hey, like they have, have you ever dealt with anyone who has speech impediments when it comes to public speaking? If so, how do you help them get over, get over that and be able to speak publicly and confidently? Absolutely. Shawnee. So for me, communication is a game of momentum. Like I've worked with people with autism. Of course, if you have a big speech impediment, it's, mm -hmm. I won't, I won't, you can't remove it sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it's just a, a birth piece, but the, or accents too. But I think mm -hmm. the big piece is how do we build momentum? So let's mm -hmm. jump into that. Communication, Shawnee, is like juggling 18 balls at the same time. Mm -hmm. So one of those balls is smiling. One of them is body language. One of them is eye contact, facial expression, storytelling. And it gets really overwhelming really mm -hmm. fast because you go, what do I start with? So for me, in the way I describe communication, it's simply, what are the three easiest balls to juggle? Because if we juggle those three balls, it's going to be a lot easier for us to show up more powerfully and to build that momentum, mm -hmm. whether you have a speech impediment or whatever, or et cetera. So let me start with ball number one. And if you want the other two, I'm happy to share as well. Oh yeah. So, I want it all. Of course. <laughs> I just don't want to monologue for 15 minutes. That's why I, I'm just, so you can jump in. Every time. <laughs> yes. So ball number one is the random word exercise. Mm -hmm. Pick a random word like sofa, like couch, like light bulb, like home, and create random presentations out of thin air on the spot for 60 seconds. Let's say you get the word mm -hmm. avocado, create a presentation with the word avocado. And there's two reasons, Shani, why this exercise is super effective. The first one is it helps you deal with uncertainty. Because guess what? Life is filled with uncertainty. Oh, yeah. Right? Like mm -hmm. When you meet somebody at a party, at a bar, at an event, you look at them, you don't come to them with a pre-list of questions. Hey, we're going to talk about this today. You just go, what's up? And you figure it out. And the second reason behind the random word exercise is if you can make sense out of nonsense, you could make sense out of anything. So if you could talk about avocados for 30 seconds, you could pretty much talk about anything mm -hmm. for 30 seconds. So I encourage everybody to do this five times a day, do it in the shower. Everyone showers every day, hopefully. Do this with your children, do this with the people around you, and you'll build momentum pretty fast. That's number one. That's a really good exercise. You're right. If you can make, I like that. If you can make sense out of nonsense, you can talk about anything. So I, I like that. I, I'm going to have to start practicing that myself because like I said, I know I want to, I strive to be better at speaking. And if I can, if I could talk about a pair of shoes randomly and give a presentation on it, then I can do a presentation almost on anything, honestly. Um, so let's talk about the daily techniques. So I guess that was one of them, right? You was thinking, let's talk about the second one that you probably would um, offer someone to do. Absolutely, Shawnee. So let's go to ball number two, Shawnee, which is the question drill. So we get to ask questions all the time in our life. Friends, family, work, co-working relationships, mm -hmm. real relationships, podcasting. But most of us, Shawnee, are reactive to those questions. We're not proactive to them. So I'll give, let me give you an example. A few years ago, when I started guesting on podcasts, I sucked. I remember some guy <laughs> asked me, like I was telling you earlier, where does the fear of communication come from? And I was like, I don't know, man, like Dubai, <laughs> New York. Like, I had no idea to answer it because I wasn't prepared. Mm -hmm. So how did I fix this? Every single day, Sean, for five minutes, I answered one question that I thought the world would ask me about my expertise communication. So day one mm -hmm. was, how do you overcome your fear of communication? Day two was, what tips do you have for introverts? Day three is, what daily practices do you recommend? But if you do that once a day, Shawnee, for five minutes, for a year, mm -hmm. you'll have answered 300 
365 questions about your industry and you'll be bulletproof. And that's the mm. question, Joe. Let me ask you, to be a great speaker, do you have to have a certain love for language in order to be a great speaker? Or is it just something, or is it more so confidence? So can, and if so, how does confidence play into becoming a great effective speaker, communicator? I would say the number one trait, those are all important by the way mm-hmm. you said, but I would say the number one trait is consistency. So let's compare mm-hmm. this to something a lot of us understand, Shani, which is like getting fit, whether it's yeah. to lose weight, whether it's to become more lean, whether it's just to be healthier. So a lot of us, we always ask, right, when we go to the gym, hey, uh, what are the steps? It, what, should I calorie count? What are the specific mm-hmm. diet plans do you recommend for me? And the personal trainer just looks at you really confused and says, are you walking 15 minutes a day? And you're like, no, why is that important? Like, I don't need to walk 15 minutes. A day. Do you drink Coca-Cola every day? Maybe you should stop drinking. I don't need to get rid of my soft drinks. That's not the point here. So the same analogy applies to speaking. We don't admire the person that goes to the gym once. We admire the person that goes to the gym 300 days out of the year. So it's the same analogy here. I don't want your audience to do anything else but get to 100 random word exercises. Don't worry about confidence. Don't worry about jumping up and down. Don't worry about being a big speaker. Worry about a binary thing. Did I do the random word exercise 100 times in my life? Mm -hmm. And then a bunch of limiting beliefs come out from the audience. Oh my God, 100 times seems like a lot. I fear I can do it once. Let me break Mm -hmm. this down. You do it five times a day for three weeks, you hit 100. And that's why I've done it 3,000 times. That is a good way to look at it. That's okay. It. That's that's like easily you could put that into practice. When you think about it, if it's the public speaking, something you want to master, you could definitely easily put that into practice because public speaking, because I, I want to have a, a desire to do a tech talk one day. I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> but, you know, just a desire that you want to, you know, that you have for yourself. And you think about communication. I'm going to take you back. I don't even know if you know this, but I'm pretty sure I'm older than you. But I... When I was in high school, I took Toastmasters, which was a public speaking type of program. And I took it in high school. And I was very, I was, like I said, I was very super shy in high school. I um, was definitely afraid of getting up speaking in front of class, but it did teach me how to be a little bit more confident in my speaking. Um, I can't remember everything that they taught us because, you know, they'll come into the classroom once a week and they'll teach us different skill sets and stuff like that. But I knew the importance of public speaking then. And I think now today, even more so with social media, public speaking has really become a really big thing because you see everybody hosting lives and doing all this different stuff. And it's all part of public speaking and all part of, you know, being, a I guess, everyone to be a thought leader. Right. Everyone wants to be a thought leader on a certain subject. And so having that effective communication, being able to effectively communicate is a huge step. But what do you say to people who feel like, what do you say to the people that you run into when you know they have those, those really bad types of um, communication styles and then they feel like, Hey, I think I've already mastered it. And then what can I learn from you? What do you say to that person? Um, great communication skills and when they talk to you you may ask them to say hey let's test your communication still is there a certain test you give people if they come to you and say that i feel like i'm already a great leader well usually shawnee i don't work with those people because <laughs> oftentimes it is some look even to me and i'll say this on the record i i don't think i'm that great of a communicator even if I'm, I'm, I coach so many amazing people and mm-hmm. the reason is more for mindset than actual practice. Cause obviously most people listening is going to be like, no, you're pretty good at speaking. Yeah, it's more about saying are. it's a, thank you. Thank you, Sean. It's more <laughs> of a mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Of saying like, if I believe I'm the best, then I'll stop growing and somebody else will beat me. Right. So, so for me, it's all about going, no, 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 I'm great, but how can I be better? I'm excellent, mm-hmm. but how can I be exceptional? Right. So that's the mindset. Those are the people I work with. But mm-hmm. in terms of the the comment, you know, the person who says I'm already great, it's pretty pretty simple because there's a difference between communication and effective communication. So w- what I would do if I had to, though I don't do it energetically anymore, is I would compare them against the 18 balls. I was like, okay, communication is like juggling 18 balls at the same time. Let's test all 18 balls and let's see how many you can juggle. <laughs> Random word exercise they usually bust at number one. Question mm-hmm. drill, I start asking really difficult questions around, especially my tech CEOs, those people who think they're, they're, they're so great. 
Yeah, mm. 15 minutes with me, they'll start crying like a baby in no time. They'll be like, well, I didn't, I didn't do our business model and this and this. It's like, well, you cleared into the question drill 300 times. <laughs> and that's why Kobe Bryant and LeBron James and Michael Jordan are the best in basketball. Mm-hmm. Not because they're these special specimens, which some of it is true, but because they practice the fundamentals better than anyone else. Oh, yeah. You know, you mentioned something about mindset. So how important is it to have that? positive mindset because right now i'm reading this book called the um the art of positive thinking and it's all about your mindset and has faith intertwined that too so what how much of your mindset goes into being able to speak um effectively right so let me talk about it generally and then we'll bring you back to to communication so Mm -hmm. of course in general like carol dweck talks about you know having that growth mindset having that positive mindset will help you in life Mm-hmm. Like what? Because because it doesn't. You know, there's a great quote from David Sachs on this, and the quote is: "Pessimists get to be right, optimists get to be rich." In mm-hmm. the sense, and he doesn't mean just rich mon- monetarily, rich in every area of life. Mm-hmm. Because if you're pessimistic, yeah, sure, you could be right ninety percent of the time. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make your situation better. Like if you're a negative <laughs> thinker, you just won't get. <laughs> You Whereas if it. you're an optimist, you always like when you asked me this before the recording. Hey, how's like life is a gift. Life is great. <laughs> yes. Right. So. If, <laughs> Right. Even if even if like, uh, you know, I, I, I had to go see somebody who's might die in a few months. Life is still mm-hmm. great because the person mm-hmm. had a long life and that's OK. But I think the key is it's all about life is perspective. So mm-hmm. how do we tie this now back to communication? Of course, if we have a positive mindset around communication, the growth is way faster because you won't sit there and question. Me. You won't go like, oh, well, who's this guy telling me to do the random word exercise? <laughs> he barely knows how to walk and talk or what does he know so when you have a negative mindset you just don't do the exercise you're not listening for the gold you're listening for the judgment like steve hardison mm-hmm. says so well mm-hmm. but then the last piece to that is going and that's what i love about communication and and this is something controversial i don't even think you need a positive mindset to be a great speaker really? I'll need, and i'll tell you why because you can be convinced i could convince any human being who just listens to what i tell them that they can be a better speaker factually on the record it's very simple <laughs> all i do is let's say we take the most negative per- provided they do what i ask them to do with that mm-hmm. caveat if they're negative they don't listen and they don't do what i tell them to do either then it won't work yeah. but if they're like like and i work with a lot of those people where they're really great people but they just have a really low self-esteem that's a very mm-hmm. different thing so mm-hmm. they go i don't think you'd be a great speaker brendan you're good shawnee's great but i don't know if i could do that that's easy all I do is I get them to the range of word exercise one time. They go, I can't do it. And I go, I'll give you five bucks if you do it once. And I don't give them the $5, by the way, <laughs> just, just for a transfer. So they go, okay. So they do it. And I go, great. What else is possible? They're like, I guess I could do it one more time. They do it one more time. Then I ask them to do it five more times, then 10 more times. And then three weeks later, that's what I force all my clients to do. I force them to do it a hundred times. But I don't mm. tell them you're going to do it a hundred times. I just go do it five times, 10 times. Now do it a hundred times. And then after you do it a hundred times, all I do is I give them the recording of the first random word exercise they did, and then, I say, and then I ask them, I don't even tell them, you tell me which one sounds better. And 100% mm-hmm. of the time, the 100th time sounds better. So it's factual, objective, and that's what pushes them into action. Oh my goodness. Let me ask you this too. Um, how can... What, how can it affect the communication? Let's talk about the different communication styles. That's what I wanted to talk about. What are the different styles of communication uh, when you're speaking publicly or um, in different settings, I guess in leadership settings? What are those different styles? For sure, Shawnee. Here's a good way of thinking about this. Mm-hmm. Because unfortunately, there's not really a set level of styles. Yeah, sure, you could mm-hmm. say like boardroom style, uh, casual style, things like that. But it becomes mm-hmm. really complicated for the end person. So here's a good way of thinking about this. Communication is contextual that's layered on the foundation of the work that we do on ourselves. Example. Mm-hmm. Let's say we do the random word exercise, the question drill, and ball number three, which is the video message, which is simply... Pick five people you love the most in your life, a brother, a sister, a client, a nephew, a friend, and send them a 20-second video message to just say how much you appreciate them, having them Mm. in your life. And the only rule to that exercise, you're not allowed to retake the video. That's the only rule. Oh, okay. That's it. So you don't, oh, no, I didn't put my makeup on. Was it? No, 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 no. no. You just open your bloody (laughs) phone. You send it. Done. One and done. One and done. But if you do the random word exercise a hundred times which only takes three weeks with five minutes a day. If you do the question drill a hundred times, which takes three months if you do a question a day, but it'll take 10 days. Like I answered 10 questions today. 
So like mm. I'll be done in ten days, <laughs> right? Or the third one, which is a video message. Same thing. Five minutes a day, five videos. You'll be done in three weeks. What happens is your foundational skill, kind of like riding a four wheel bike. Like when you ride that four wheeler, you don't really know what you're doing, but after you do it a hundred times, you're like, okay, I think I go to two wheels. So it's the same thing here. Is not only the foundation. To your point, then we can shift our style based on the context. So another example here, I'm going really nuanced here.、Mm-hmm. Is let's say you're having small talk with a high level executive. Well, because you did the random word X a hundred times, you could BS anything. So you could easily have that conversation because、mm-hmm. you did the fundamentals, etc. Let me ask you this too: Do you see there are different?、Um... Communication styles when it comes to men versus women, and is there a different level of confidence also when it comes to communication? Yeah, I always get in trouble with this question. So, take, <laughs> so I always like to say, get, get, take, take my advice with a grain of salt. What、yes. do I know? I'm just a guy at the end of the day. But,、yes. but here's here's what I will say. Generally speaking, generally speaking, the number of touch points that a man has with another man is significantly lower. Than the number of touch points that a woman has with another woman, and I can say that with certainty because most of my clients are women, right?、Mm. I would say sixty, sixty-five percent of my clients are women now. So, what does that mean? That means, like in a boardroom setting, like、uh, Tony Robbins calls this the meta report. So, when a woman communicates how is their day, they tend to communicate every little detail of their day. So, if you ask your girlfriend how is their day, they go,、mm-hmm. oh, like this happened in the morning. Then I had coffee. Then、yes. I talked to this person. Then I did this. Because women have that intrinsic biological need to communicate all those little things, and that's why they get into trouble with the romantic partners and why women get mad at men a lot. Because when women ask men how their day is, in their mind they saw what happened, but they just only give the bullet point because、mm-hmm. they're all about rationality, efficiency. Rationale is the wrong word that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> But more efficiency, right? It's the more efficient way of communicating. So they just answer good. But a woman always gets upset around that because they go like, "Oh, this person doesn't care enough to tell me about their day." That's the assumption、mm-hmm. that we make because my girlfriend's told me about their day. So、mm-hmm. that's one, I would say, glaring example of the main difference between how women conversate versus how men conversate. So what does that mean for us? What's the tip? What's the principle?、Mm-hmm. If you want to be a master communicator, you need to spend more of your time. This is more advanced, understanding the opposite sex than your own. So that means、mm-hmm. me. I don't need to do much research on how men communicate with men. I am a dude. Like it's、mm-hmm. easy. But I spend a lot more time communicating with women, and I would argue I do a good job because most of my clients are women. <laughs> Is, so, so when they give me their meta report, I don't cut them off. I spend、mm-hmm. the time listening to them, so they feel heard, seen, and understood. And I don't try and fix it unless they want、mm-hmm. me to. That's you know what that is so true. We are very detailed when we talk as women, and I can even know my communication. My friends and it's like, oh girl, give me all start from the beginning. And she's like, okay, so it was dark when I woke up, and that's how I knew we'll take a step by step. And you right as for men, they're most so like, okay, just give me high level. What happened? Did you get it? Did you not get it? And that's it. They don't want to necessarily hear the story in between. <laughs> not all of them want to hear the story in between. So I want to get to your daily tips on how we can improve ourselves, become better communicators. Let's talk about the daily tips that you have that you say would be easy for us to do. For sure, Shani. And one other point I want to add on that, since you asked the question, is、mm-hmm. there's actually a reason biologically why women act like that, why men act like that.、Mm-hmm. So my mentor said this once, and I didn't understand it the first time. He says, "What Brendan? When a couple buys a home, men see homes, but women feel homes."、Mm. And I was like, "What do you mean by that?" And what he said was, "Well, let's say there's a couple in a house, and there's a realtor showing them around. The man is focused on how many bathrooms are there, how、mm-hmm. many bedrooms, what's the price of this house going to be, what's the down payment, is this a fixed, is a variable rate, should how much money should I save in my budget? That's what they're thinking about."、Mm-hmm. But what the women is thinking about is they're imagining themselves cook in the kitchen. With their、yes. family, they imagine themselves, their children. Oh, this is not safe.、Oh, that doesn't make sense. If I had a three-year-old,、mm-hmm. they would get hurt here. They imagine what happens in the backyard, so they feel home. So they're looking every little detail of how that home is and the emotion around that house. That's why I always feel they complete each other, right? In、mm-hmm. many ways, that's the that's the symbiotic relationship between both in a heterosexual relationship, anyways. Yeah,、mm-hmm. but but that's the idea. 
Mm-hmm. So it makes perfect sense. You just got to adapt and understand that, not get frustrated around that. Yes, you that's, do. That's how I can live with women and be happy, right? So that's the idea. <laughs> so so that's that key. In terms of the mm-hmm. daily practices, here's what I'll say, right? Because mm-hmm. I don't want to give 10 tips. Most people won't take action. Here's <laughs> the most important thing, Shani. Yes. The best way to speak is to speak. So let me mm-hmm. tell you the biggest mistake that everyone's making right now listening to this podcast. The mistake is... They're thinking to themselves, wow, Sean, you brought in this cool guest named Brendan showing all these practical, the random word is so cool. Mm-hmm. The questions, oh, I never thought of that. One question, every day. video messages, whoa, I could make my grandparents day who live on the other side of the country. But the problem is, is that they don't do it. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that they listen to me and you talk, but they don't realize that if they want to get better, they got to do the talking. Meaning, everybody who's listening to this podcast right now, book 15 minutes not 15 hours 15 minutes every single day in your calendar to do the three exercises the random word exercise takes five minutes to do if you got children in your house do it with your kids give them Mm -hmm. a random word have them give you random word the question drill do this with your family you don't have to just answer questions about work i i do this with children all the time i go Mm -hmm. up to them and ask them really difficult questions like, uh, what was the biggest lesson you learned about yourself this year? And they go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and, and then they start thinking about it. It's fun. And it mm-hmm. forces you to answer because they go, what about you? And now you've mm-hmm. got to answer them. Video yeah. messages. Have your kids send video messages. People who have kids who are listening. Have them send video messages to their aunties, their uncles, the people around them. It'll inspire you too to do more video messages. That's the key. If you just do those three things, I have never met a single human being in my career that has never met me prior to it that of already doing all three of these things consistently. I think that's so true. And I think it's about being intentional. Like you said, booking the time on your calendar, being intentional about being able to be a better speaker. And that's just what, that's the place that I'm in where I'm intentional now about everything. I have to make sure I have everything on my calendar that I'm doing throughout my day in order for me to actually remember this is what I have to do. And I want to make sure I get this done throughout the day. So I like that tip. I'm definitely going to do that for myself and book that time on my calendar. Um, what do you want my audience to get out of this conversation today with us? For sure, Shawnee. And it goes back to my question, which is, how would your life change if you became an exceptional communicator? It's not about mm-hmm. the fear, because there's so many things that we're fearful of that we do anyways, mm-hmm. but it's more about saying, let's find the intrinsic motivation within us to communicate more effectively. And for all of us, Shawnee, that answer is different. It could be, I want to be a big TED speaker and impact millions mm-hmm. of lives. I want to be a guest on podcasts. That's your why. And you won't need much motivation to get that done. You'll do the exercises. You'll want to impact those people's lives. The second version of that, there's multiple ones, but I'll give you mm-hmm. a couple. Number two is getting promoted in my company. Okay, I want to show up better in my leader. I want to be a leader in this company. I want to get that promotion. I want to make more money. That's the second. But the third one is just as important which is I want to be a better parent for my kids. I want to be Mm -hmm. a better friend for the people around me. And I saw that A plus dad, that A plus mom, and how their kids are not going crazy. They're always calm. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Because their parents are masters at conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. So how do we master it? Communication is every moment of our life, Sean. So if we all take that time to answer, how would my life change if I was an exceptional communicator? All of us would have a much greater life. That is so true, Brendan. And I really do like that about the parenting, the relationships, because like I said, when I thought about this episode, I just knew communication is just overall, like I said, it's a whole part of our lives and how we talk to each other to better understand, you know what I mean? And I I saw one part of one of the videos on YouTube that you have when it's talk about being more of, of an effective listener, I think versus speaking a lot. And I think I'm, I'm working on it. Can you kind of touch on that a little bit to talk about how important it is to, to listen versus always speaking when it comes to communicating? For sure, Shani. I'll do it better. I'll give you a tip on how to get better at this. Mm-hmm. Because your, your comment is something that is so true across all of us. Because I think the challenge is not really that we don't understand the importance of listening. Because we all do. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, Aristotle always says, you know, you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. You got to <laughs> listen. But the challenge to your point, which you brought up really well in the question is, well, Brent, how do I actually get better at this? Mm -hmm. So here's a tip that changes the lives of my clients that if you just copy paste, that's why I'm moving your audience into action. If you do it, it's going to change your life. Here's what you do. Pick one person in your life, one person you really care about, who ideally has a growth mindset like you. So uh, Mm. the best example of this could be a significant other, ideally, 
if you're if you're dating somebody, you're with somebody who's got that growth mindset. It could be a best friend. It could be somebody you're listening to this podcast with. That's great. Mm-hmm. Like somebody's just like let's say you're sitting here and you're sharing what you learned from Shawnee's podcast with somebody else. That's mm-hmm. perfect. Here's what you do. You do what I call a goals call. So a goals call is simply this. You sit down for 45 minutes, not five minutes, 45 minutes with another person. So let's say I did this with you as an example. We're not going to do mm-hmm. it, but I'm going to explain it. So let's say, let's say Shawnee is my best friend. So I'm going to sit down with Shawnee for 45 minutes and I'm going to ask you to do this for two minutes. Write down your top three goals for the year and write down why are those three goals important to you. So you're going to spend two, three minutes. You're going to write down, okay, uh, a better relationship, more money, uh, mm-hmm. more podcast downloads, whatever. You mm-hmm. write those three things down. And there's three games, there's three pieces to having a successful goals call. Number one is you are not allowed for the entire duration of the call to coach or give advice. So if Shawnee tells me your goal, I'm not allowed to jump in and say, hey, here's what I think. No, no, no. That is forbidden on this call. That's number one. Number two is I am allowed to clarify with questions to deepen the understanding of your goals and my understanding of what your goals are. So for example, if you say, I don't know, one of my goals is to grow my podcast. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you questions like, what does that mean downloads wise? What are your downloads at right now? What is your vision for this podcast? I'll just start bulleting you with questions Mm -hmm. slowly, obviously, and you'll just answer. And the third rule is I'm allowed to restate and that's it. So let's say you give me your three goals. I'll say, okay, Shani, to make sure I got that, these are your three goals. That's why they're important to you, correct? And then you go, yes, but Brenda, you missed this. And I'll write that down. And I'll ask you questions. So you're pretty much only allowed to ask questions for 45 minutes and never allowed to give advice. And if you do that with 10 different people, your deep listening skills will skyrocket very rapidly. I I believe so, because it's so hard to sit there and not say anything or give advice or give type of feedback. So that would be a definitely a really good exercise. I'm definitely going back to the podcast and listen so I can make sure I write down all the tips that you gave, Brendan. I definitely have to do that. So listen, this has been a good show. Let our audience know how they can connect with you and how they can just reach out and um, try to take some of your courses or some of the book of one-on-one. Let them know. Absolutely, Sean. It was so so great to be on the show, by the way. I love your yes. energy. So thanks Thank for being you. Here. Yes, it's great. So two ways to keep in touch. The first one is go to YouTube and type Master Talk. You'll have access to hundreds of free videos on how to speak and communicate ideas. Ideally, my goal is for my entire brain to be on that channel so you can just watch a bunch of videos and get everything. <laughs> And the second way to keep in touch is to attend one of my free communication workshops over Zoom. I do a live one every two weeks for the community. It's free. There's eight-year-olds who come to that call. There's CEOs of massive companies who come to that call. It's a party that everyone's invited to. So if you want to go to that, just jump in at rockstarcommunicator.com and register for the next one. That is so awesome, Brenda. This has been a really good conversation. Listen, all the info for to be able to connect with you and get in contact with you will be at the in the show notes and also of course attached to the YouTube video as well. Because I just think it's important that people stay connected with you because we all can use we all can be better speakers, better communicators in every area of our lives. So I really hope this podcast is really good for you guys. Uh, make sure you stay connected with Brendan. I am your host, Shawnee Sanders. Wait, before I leave, I'm about to end this show and I do not end it like this before i end brendan please give me tell me what advice what good advice you receive from a woman good advice i received from a woman i'll I'll use my mother so i'll tell you a story so when i was a kid that's a beautiful question by the way Mm -hmm. i need to ask that more (laughs) so when i was 10 years old i didn't grow up with a lot right my parents were factory workers but the one lesson my mother taught me is around generosity here's how it came to be Mm -hmm. standing in front of a bus stand and i find a ten dollar bill on the floor so I pick it up and I go, yes, $10 is like $10,000. I can buy so much candy. <laughs> so, so I bring the $10 someone. I tell my mom, hey, mom, I find I found this $10 bill on the floor. The first thing she told me was, are you sure it wasn't somebody else's? Did somebody else drop it? And obviously somebody else dropped it, mm-hmm. but there was nobody else around me. So Brennan's $10 now. <laughs> and, then, and then she told me a story. She laughed and she said, you know, when I first immigrated to Canada, Brendan, because she's a really short woman, she always looks on the ground whenever she's walking. And it was mm-hmm. snowing outside. And there was a $20 bill that she noticed on the floor that nobody else picked up because everyone's always looking straight. So she mm-hmm. picks up that $20 bill. And then she tells me, very nonchalantly, oh, and then I used that $20 bill to feed a family who couldn't eat that day. 
but she said it in such a casual way. It was mm. never meant to be a lesson. It's just about how we're supposed to live our life. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the value that I learned from her is it doesn't matter whether you have everything in the world, you got nothing because we didn't have much. You mm -hmm. should always try and help other people and serve in the best way that you can. And I've taken that lesson. That's why I guess, I, you know, actually, I don't guess I know is my mom was a big reason why Master Talk's bigger mission is not necessarily my clients, even if I love them to death. Mm -hmm. It's really about how do I democratize this for the seven-year-old girl who can't afford a communication card. Yeah, being able to serve others is amazing. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Brendan. Um, guys, listen, thank you so much for hanging out with me on the Girl Techno podcast. I am super excited to give you guys this episode. I can't wait for you guys to listen to it. This has been so many great things in this. Please stay connected with Brendan. You'll see all the information below. And once again, I'm your host, Shani Sanders, and we will see you next time.